poster is about uh, the morphologies we use here at the Blue Brain Project. And uh, the morphologies are a, a crucial component of the, of the simulation process at Blue Brain. Not only do the morphologies determine the connectivity uh, within the cortex, but each individual morphology um, also affects the electrophysiology that's, uh, that's simulated inside that neuron. Uh, and so this poster is an overview of our morphological process, how we go from raw um, experimental neurons that have been filled with a dye, uh, how they're reconstructed uh, digitally inside a computer, and how we then uh, repair those uh, morphologies and prepare them for use in the simulation. And over the past uh, couple decades, Henry Markram uh, and his lab have collected uh, an enormous amount of morphological data. So every time they do a patch clamp experiment, uh, they fill the, the morphology with dye uh, and then reconstruct it. And so we've got almost a thousand uh, reconstructed neuronal morphologies um, from the cortex that we can that we can use in our simulations, and so that's fantastic. It's an, it's an enormous data set. The morphologies come from from brain slices that are 300 microns thick, so anything outside of that slice region is missing from. The so we have a statistical uh, algorithm that uh, replaces the symmetry of the neurons by sort of regrowing uh, missing parts. We also have a process for cloning uh, the morphologies. We know that morphological diversity is, uh, is vital for getting uh, robust invariant connectivity patterns in our simulations, and there's evidence that that's, that's also the case in the nervous system. So in order to get more morphological diversity from the, the set of actual reconstructions we have, we, we do a process we call cloning, where basically we statistically jitter each, each morphology. So each branch length is allowed to change by a random amount, and the branch angles uh, as they come out of the neuron are rotated a random amount. And that allows us to take um, you know, the 600 or so reconstructions we have that are suitable for simulation and put those into an infinite number of clones that each have a unique uh, space filling and that results in, in better conductivity pattern. What we also do is classify our morphologies into different morphological types, or M-types. Um, right now, we divide them into 55 different M-types uh, across the six layers of the cortex. Um, currently, it's basically an expert process. So we have uh, neuroanatomists who've been working with these morphologies for decades, and they go through them, uh, and based on the statistics, uh, the morphometrics they measure from these cells, uh, they classify them into different cell types. Currently we have our morphological experts uh, look at the morphologies and they say based on uh, you know these numbers and, and the way it's filling space and, and the electrical behavior this is a morphology of this type. But we'd also like to have a completely objective classification routine that that runs on the on the data automatically and says well it's 75% likely that it's this cell type. So one of our big uh, goals over the next uh, year is to develop uh, computational neuroanatomy tools, which are useful not just for us, but for the, for the wider neuroscience community. So we're developing a, uh, a, a morphological analysis toolkit in Python, essentially, which we hope to open source uh, soon. And that allows us to import uh, a population of morphologies um, and analyze them uh, in every uh, morphometric manner that uh, the people have talked about in the past. So basically a complete morphometric analysis on these uh, that's easy to run and quick and useful. 